Welcome my gorgeous friends to a new video of the series. This is Clever Coding and I'm going to be teaching you about a very important topic today. Uh, we've been uh, dealing with very small data types and we've been dealing with small values previously. But what happens if I tell you that code becomes increasingly more complex when there's more types of data and more types of values. For, for in the beginning, uh, throughout this course, we've been dealing with small values and small data. But as we come into real world life problems, uh, real world life problems deal with large amounts of data and how to store all of that data, we have to introduce ourselves to a new scenario which is called data structures and algorithms and this is a very like advanced course when you're done the prerequisites like in programming fundamentals in mostly so many colleges around the world but uh to give a a few insight a, a lot small insight i want to give that we've already covered a video on arrays uh you could check that out in our series but today we're gonna get a little more deeper into uh, one-dimensional arrays and two-dimensional arrays so if I go on Google you could see this picture of an array so this is basically what looks inside of a computer when you want to store more than one value in a data type we use we tend to use arrays and other kind of data structures so arrays are also some type of data structures there's vectors that's also another type of data structure and then there's so many more so basically array is the most simplest one in c++ this is also used in c which is the older version of c++ but that's also comparatively like another language and so arrays are zero index like you could see from here so these are like the addresses you could see like zero one two three four five six seven eight so basically the the size of the array is nine it starts from zero all the way to eight so basically nine and basically these values are stored so 40 55 63 17 22 20, 68 89 97 89 so basically these are integers that are stored in the, all of those spaces and they're adjusting to each other they are in con contiguous locations so so they are adjusting to each other and they're like after one index the next starts and after that and next they're not like separated so that's how arrays are like packed into a sequence so you can see the first index is as zero and the last index as eight okay so what happens if we this is called a one-dimensional array what happens if we want a two-dimensional array or what happens if we want a three-dimensional array or so on we could have as much as we want for a two-dimensional array if we want a two-dimensional 2d you could see that uh, if we have some kind of integer, I could say integer. Uh, please forgive me because I am not that good in writing on this paint. So int, if I have something like marks, so m a r k s. So if I have marks and I have two values, for instance, I could have one as so this is basically the two-dimensional construct so what happens when uh there's two rows and three columns i op introduce myself with a box and in the box you have two rows and three columns so i make one line over here and one line over here and it's zero index so basically it starts from zero one two three four and then the fifth one. So basically the size of this two dimensional array is six. It starts from zero to five. This is what we think observing it. But in real programs which are stored in computer, it is not stored like that. It's stored linearly. And linearly meaning in just one line. So basically you're gonna have one, two, three, four, and then five. So you basically six. So over here with zero, one, two three four and five so basically zero to five it's going to be stored linearly in the memory like that so in memory wise it's stored like that but conventionally what we think as it is stored like that so that's how we are going to picture it in our minds okay so if if this is two-dimensional what happens if it's three-dimensional so if it's three-dimensional for instance i have uh now three cubes so one the same thing it's going to be stored in a linearly manner but for us we consider it as a, some kind of 
three-dimensional pattern. So basically, if I could say, I could say two, and then I say three, and then I say two. So now I have to total this up. So basically, two multiplied by three, which is six, and then six multiplied by two, which is 12. So that the, means the size of this array is 12. So the size of this is 12. How is it stored uh, in a picture-wise manner? We're going to think of it as two. First of all, we go over here, this left side. So left side, there's two. So basically, there's going to be two containers. And inside the two containers, there's three by two. So basically, in these two containers, there's three rows and two columns. So one and two. And then there's three rows and then two columns. So that's how it's stored. Two, so basically, this is zero. This is the first one, so, and this is the second one. So zero, one, and then after that, it starts over here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the first one, and the same thing over here. Zero, one, two, three, four, and then fifth. So that's how it's stored, and that's how we conventionally see it as a programmer but when it's stored in the memory the memory is stored like this okay now it's going to be stored the same thing what we call as 0 1 2 3 all the way to 12 or we could say something called a bitwise pattern like like this so basically first of all it's divided to 0 and 1 and then after that you have 0 all the way to 6 uh, i'm not going to be writing all of this but i hope you understand that uh, the fifth one is the last one and then zero over here so basically there's zero one two three and then all that okay so over to here too so basically it starts from zero and then all the way to the last one which is fifth and in between all of those uh, letters so that's how it's stored linearly in the memory uh, so I hope you understand this concept this logic and this is how we're gonna be dealing with in our okay so now we're gonna be writing some code related to two-dimensional arrays so I'm going to include my handy header file and then I'm going to include my namespace standard and also the integer main function and all of that important stuff inside the container. Okay, so the thing is we want a two-dimensional array. So I could say something like PF marks. PF stands for programming fundamentals. So three and I don't know, just put three as the first one. Oh, one minute, put two, okay. So this is how we're gonna do it, three and then two. Now this is two dimensional, meaning three multiplied by two, it is how much? Six. So basically six, the size of this is, I could say over here, size is six. And if it's six, that means the if one integer is four bytes we know that one integer is four bytes right and if it's six that means four so what does that mean that concludes that it's four multiplied by six equaling to 24. so 24 bytes are just stored using that so if i if you don't believe me go console out size of and Put the PF marks inside and save this as code 22. And now let's execute this. So compile and run. And you can see 24 bytes. So that was awesome. So we defined our two dimensional array, which is PF marks, has three rows and two columns, and it's total of six size and has 24 bytes reserved in the memory. Now I want the user to explicitly enter values into this one by one. So basically I'm gonna use two for loops to use this. So basically that's how we're gonna manipulate this two dimensional array using for loops and also three dimensional arrays and four dimensional and so on. So if I, basically if I say four and i is equal to zero, i is less than, now the first thing is that the row size. So it's th row size is three. So basically uh, it's gonna be zero to two. So basically i is less than three. So i plus plus. And then after that we have four, Int. Now the last, now the thing is that we're gonna have this as j less than two because the column size is two. So basically j plus plus. And then after that we're gonna have c in. And notice over here that I use pf marks as my variable. And then 
the thing I have to do is that I have to put both as the same order. This is really important. You have to put in the same order. So uh, I was first, meaning the row was first and the column was second was just J. So that's how we're going to put all the values. So I could put over a comment. So I would say enter values in the 2D array one by one. Okay, so that was it. Now what happens we want is that this is how we're gonna input all the values. Now we wanna out display them in two ways. One way we could display in row major order and the other way we could display in column major order. Now stick with me, you're gonna love this right now. So basically for the first case we could say uh, row major order. So that's the row major order, console output backslash n okay so this is a new line and we're one in a new line so basically i could say four inch i is equal to zero i is less than three which is the size of the row i plus plus and then after that we could say four j is equal to zero j less than two and then after that j plus plus and then inside of this we could say console output now pf marks so basically that's the thing uh, pf marks i and then after that is J, so basically J. And then I want a little more pretty, so basically I put a space. And after this, I want to put a console output end line. So uh, then I just want to explain this a little faster so that I could, you could understand. The f thing is that it's going to go through the array. It's going to go in the first case, which is zero, and it's less than three. We know that it's in a row major order. So basically, there's going to be zero to two, zero to two, zero to two from here. It's going to go in the first one, which is less than three. That's correct. So it goes over here in the column wise. So it's going to say J is zero and less than two. So it's going to print out PF marks first one. Then it's going to give a space. And, and then after that, it's going to go and do plus plus increment, which uh, is going to be one. And then after that, you're going to see it's going to be one. So it's going to be printed out. Then the next one, it's going to print it out. And then after that, it's going to go plus plus. You're going to see if it's two. Now, if it's two, it's going to terminate because it's not equal to. So it's going to it's going to give an end line. So after that end line, it goes to the next code. It's going to increment again to one. And then after that, the same process appears. Two will be two numbers will be appearing side by side and then end line. And then after that, uh, the next time it's going to execute after when it's going to be two. And then after that, two numbers begin appearing again, you're going to see a six total of six numbers in a cube ways cube wa, 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 cube. Sorry, man, cube way shaped. So basically you're going to see in the output screen, a cube way shaped. Uh, what we basically said, a uh, programmer's perspective, how we look at two dimensional arrays. That's how you're going to see it on the screen. So that's going to be looking really neat. And then after that, we could say uh, column major order. So basically column major order not order order and now four and i could say the same yeah uh, now in column major order the thing is that we bring the columns first and then the rows after so in the outer part we put the columns and in the inner part we put the row not like the row major order where we put the row and the outer part and the and the inner nested part we put the co row column so in this case, we did the uh, the the 360. Uh, you could say the 180. Okay, 180 reverse. So J is equal to zero. J is less than. Uh, now I know that the column is two uh, two sides. So basically J plus plus. And then after that, we could say four uh, int i is equal to zero. And then i is less than three. And then i plus plus. Okay. Now the thing is, we console out, and we could say something called like PF. Yeah. So basically the thing when again, note this, it's an annotation that it is very important to make your code in the same manner, what you've been implementing in the beginning. So basically J is uh, after and I is before because I is the row and J is the column. And now after that, we just do a console output because we know the logic for this and there's going to be a column major wise order for this so basically i could uh give a backslash n to this to make it escape sequence and everything so okay now we're done so i just want to print out something like for instance console output uh row major order and the other one is console output 
So column major order. Okay, so saving it and now executing it. Compile and run. Now there's a pr uh, error over here. It's saying J was not declared in the scope. For this, we have to put an integer J. So basically that will fix it up. Execute, compile and run. Okay, now it's gonna say to us, enter values in the 2D array one by one. So basically I randomly select any kind of values I want. I did two, three, four, five. Okay, so I entered these one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you can see row major order is gonna be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. As expected, we've explained and column major order, three, three rows, uh, three values are appearing in one single row. And then after that, a backslash n comes. And then after that, three more values appear. And that's how it executes. So that was awesome. I hope you love this code. Uh, if you have any kind of questions related to this program, what we did, or any kind of questions throughout this series, you could comment down in the comment sections. I'll be there for you. I'm going to try to read your messages and going to try to reply as soon as possible. So hope you like this one. Peace out. We'll see you in the next one.